Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the scapular assistance test. Now, I'm gonna go through some verbiage first on why you would perform this test. I promise we're gonna get into the technique of how it's performed in just a few minutes, but it's very important to understand why you do this test. Let's suppose you have a patient with subacromial impingement syndrome. So what are some tests that would be positive? Well, probably NEARS impingement test, You've got the Hawkins-Kennedy test, and they might also have that painful arc. So they abduct their shoulder, maybe right in this range, it's painful. But then as they push past it, it's okay going up towards the top. So those are some things that might be positive in shoulder impingement, okay? Now, when you learned about impingement in school, there was primary impingement, there's secondary impingement, and then there's internal impingement, which we don't see quite as often. Normally, things are either primary or secondary impingement. Now, in secondary impingement, one of the things we often see is scapular dyskinesis or scapular dyskinesia. What is that? Well, remember that as the shoulder abducts, let's say, if we look at the glenohumeral joint and the scapula thoracic joint, or this, the scapula, for every two degrees of glenohumeral elevation, there's one degree of scapular rotation. So as I bring the shoulder up, that is the glenohumeral joint, the scapula, among other things, has to upwardly rotate, okay? And sometimes there's a mismatch between the strength and control of the upward rotators of the scapula and the downward rotators. And more often than not, if there's an issue, it's gonna be weakness or poor control of the upward rotators. What are the upward rotators? Well, we have the upper traps, we have the lower traps, and then also the serratus anterior. Those are the primary upward rotators of the scapula. So the purpose of the scapular assistance test is to determine whether or not the person needs to focus on strengthening and getting better control in those scapular upward rotators. So let's go take a look at how this test is performed, and then we'll come back at the end and discuss the interpretation of the results. So to perform the scapular assistance test, the patient's gonna be positioned either in standing or sitting. Now, if you're a lot taller than your patient is, as I am here, it's best if the patient is standing. That way you can sit in a stool and you're approximately eye level with the patient's scapula. This is gonna make it easier to control the movement of the scapula later on in this test. Now, the first part of this test is not shown in the video, but basically you're gonna have the patient abduct their shoulder as much as they can. So basically go through abduction, active range of motion. And you can just eyeball it. Uh, it's preferable if you can take a goniometric measurement, get an exact range of motion for that abduction. Okay. Now, later on in the test, when you're controlling the scapula, if you're using a goniometer, you're probably going to have to have somebody else do it on the second part, an aide, a student, something like that. Okay. And then for the second part of this test, the patient will again perform abduction active range of motion. However, the PT will assist the scapula passively with upward rotation, again, while they concurrently abduct their shoulder. So the first part is getting a good grip on their scapula while their arm is down by their side. The two parts that are easiest to control are the inferior border, which you're going to move kind of in this direction, and then the superior border, or at the very least, if you can't get a good grip on that, the medial portion of their spine of the scapula, and you're gonna move it down like this. So overall, that is an upward rotation movement, okay? And you're gonna do that while they abduct their shoulder. And you want to approximate that glenohumeral coordination where for every two degrees of abduction of the shoulder, that is the glenohumeral joint, you wanna respect that one degree of upward rotation, okay? So let's take a look at that right now. So again, they're abducting their shoulder and I am assisting that upward rotation of the scapula. And they're gonna go as high as they can. And then once they're at the peak of the movement, you're not just gonna let go of the scapula, you're also going to allow passive downward rotation, more eccentrically, so to speak, as they lower their arm back down, okay? Now, obviously, if you are holding the scapula with two hands, as I mentioned, you are not gonna be able to take a goniometric measurement, so you can obviously eyeball it from the start, but if you took a goniometric measurement at the beginning, you're probably gonna to wanna to have someone else come and assist with that. And you're also gonna monitor the quality 
and efficiency of the movement as well. Now, when you're performing the scapular assistance test and you are manually assisting that scapula into upward rotation, one of two things is gonna happen. Number one, they're moving through that painful arc and nothing changes. They still have the same symptoms, the same pain, nothing happens, despite helping with that upward rotation. That would be a negative test. And that would imply that upward rotation is really not the issue for that patient, right? You assisted with upward rotation, it didn't change anything. So you probably don't need to focus on strengthening or getting better control in those upward rotators to help that particular patient. And that would be more in line with primary subacromial impingement syndrome. Now, the second thing that could happen is you assist that upward rotation. And as they're moving through what was once a painful arc, that pain and other symptoms are abolished or at the very least reduced compared to no assistance. That would be a positive test. And what does that tell you? Well, when you assisted with upward rotation, it helped them. So you probably need to focus on getting more strength and better control in those scapular upward rotators. Now, at the start of this video, we said that the three upward rotators of the scapula are the upper traps, the lower traps, and serratus anterior. Now, again, there could be exceptions, but in the vast majority of patients, there's already gonna be sufficient strength in the upper traps. It's generally the other two muscles, the serratus anterior and the lower traps, that are gonna have some weakness. And in this scenario, which would be consistent with secondary subacromial impingement syndrome, with you, where you have scapular dyskinesia, you'd wanna focus on strengthening the lower traps and the serratus anterior. And if there was weakness in that upper trap, you'd also want to strengthen that. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video, I really appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button for alerts for videos in the future. Thank you so much.